Welcome to Pixel Composer tutorial. I know it's been a while. Um, sorry, been a little bit busy with the college work. But now, uh, my my final exam is over, so we have a little bit more time and more energy to start on a new tutorial series. And I say new series because it's been four months since then, and we are now at version one point. Well, currently the, the public version will be 1.14.7.1 And a lot has changed since then So before we go through the new feature I want to go back to the previous content, the previous tutorial And to update it to make sure that it has all the newest feature, all the newest content in it So what do I have to say that Pixel Composer is a node-based VFX editor For pixel art and art in general The interface is separated into a panels like this Every one of these is a panels and what has been added in this version is each panel is now a, can be tapped or it can be converted into a tab so let's go to the panel manipulation when you select the panels and you mouse hover on the edge you will see here the color change a little bit right it go a little bit brighter so you can then double click and then you can move it around you can move it to the side you can put it in a tab in the middle which is going to make it a tab you can hold control key and now you are you pop it out as its own window when you have this separate window like this there will be this pin sometimes it's a big pin sometimes it's a small pin but if you don't if you don't pin the windows then when you click out of it it's just gonna disappear now i'm just only gonna go through like the the important panels which is this four we have this preview area preview panels we have this graph panel we have the animation panel and the inspector panel so now let's go to the node right away. You can, you know, control N, create new project. So you're gonna start at the graph panel here. You can right click to add new node, right? We have different category and there are a lot of nodes. They have really a lot of nodes. I think like 300 nodes so far. So you can just, you know, start typing immediately to search for the node you want and then press enter to create it. Of course, given that you have to know the name of the node first. Each of the nodes have different number of junction. Right? We have the input junction on the left side. We have output junction on the right side. And for some nodes, there are also a junction on top as well. So the basic concept here is that you have multiple nodes. Each node is a single operation. And then you connect the junction between the output junction to the input junction of the next node to do some processing. And then you build a node up to create an interesting effect or image. When you have multiple nodes, you will notice that there's this icon. This green icon means that this node is now being inspected. And this eye icon means that this node are now being previewed. So now, let's go to the preview area here. When you select on a node, you will see that it will not show on preview area. You have to double click on it, which will now send this node into the preview area. If you only click it once, it will just send it to an inspector here. There are also a number of settings down here for the preview area. If you want to create a seamless texture, then you can set the tiling so that you can see uh, your preview next to each other. There's a grid option for you to show the grid. There is this onion skin, which will overlay multiple frames of the animation. You can enable the onion skin here, which will allow you to see animation in the frame before and the frame after it. In the onion skin section, you can change color change the opacity and you can go to this animation panels to adjust how many frames you want to see now this on your skin will only work with a frame that you already render so if sometime you try to like extend your frame further and you don't see the preview it probably means that you haven't rendered those nodes yet so you just have to like scroll up or you just play the animation so that it will render every frame and now you'll be able to see the on your skin so now let's go to the inspector area like I said, when you single click on a node, it will send that node property to the inspector. In the inspector area here, you can change the name of the node right, by just clicking on it and then just type a new name. You can lock the, the panels so that when you select on other node, it won't change. This is more useful when you have this node, right? And then you right click and then you can say send to new inspector. Now you will have new inspector for that node, which are locked by default that you can use to control it while you are doing other things. In each property in the inspector node here, you can toggle animation. So you will send this value into the animation panel, which you can now, you know, change the frame and then change the values, which will create an animation. 
And if you use software like After Effects, then this is like the same thing. Now there's also the visibility option. If you turn it on, then this value will appear as a junction. So now you can connect it to other values. There's also an option to use expression. This will allow you to type in port to control your values. So here we are at the property tab, which will just be the property of that node. But there are also a setting tab where you can set in a more basic value in that node. Like for example, you have this basic scale node. And now you go to the setting of the scale node, you will see you can change the color depth or we can change the texture interpolation. So if you want your image to be uh, blurry for some reason, then you can do it. Uh, the color depth setting can be useful sometime when you want to have like a smooth gradient and you don't want to have like banding effect. You can use color depth to fix that. And the array process type here is a way for you to control how the node will deal with array values. I might go through this in more detail in like batch editing video. Now that we have animation, so we go to the properties and then you toggle animation and you add all the keyframe, right? But what if you want it to loop? Well, in the animator panel here, we have this setting where you can set different looping mode. Normally, it's just gonna use hold mode so that when it reaches the last keyframe, it's just gonna hold the value till the end of the animation. But you can also change it to loop. It's just gonna loop the animation again and again. You can make it a ping pong animation so that it will ping pong the animation back and forth. And there's also a wrap mode or a wrap keyframe, which will basically put or take this first keyframe and then move it to the last one or copy it to the last one here so that your animation will become seamless. But what if, for example, you have an animation like this with three keyframe and then you only want to loop the last two. If you go to the loop mode, it will just loop the entire animation. What you can do here, if you can click and then drag your loop mode out, until it's only cover the last two keyframe like this. What happened now is that it's only gonna loop the last two keyframe like this. You can also do the same thing with a ping pong mode as well. So you click and drag. Here, the last two keyframe will just ping pong back and forth. The other thing you can do is you can make your animation more smooth. You can click on show graph here to see how the value change over time. And you will see that the interpolation here is like a, a linear interpolation, right? is look kinda robotic. You can double click on the keyframe and then you drag your mouse out to the side. Now you will make that keyframe a smooth keyframe. You can do this to multiple keyframe and you will see in the graph that your interpolation is now more smooth because you can adjust each of them independently and the larger or the longer the handle here is, the more smooth that area will become. Not only that, you can click on the keyframe itself and then right click and now you will have different is in setting. We can set it back to a linear. You can make it as smooth like we just do before. We can also have more control over the easing by clicking on lock or lock by easing. You can see now that the handle look different. Instead of this half circle, it will become full circle. And now when you move this handle, you can now move it up in X and Y axis to shape up your interpolation curve. And this is a basic of Pixel Composer. We're not gonna go through all of these other panels. And most of the time you're gonna be learning how the node work and you know, all the 300 something node we have here. I will go through all the previous tutorial series to see if there are new content that has been added or changed that I have to make new video or not. And for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.